North Carolina continues to get more love than South Carolina in the national media space. And that's exactly what Shane Beamer wants. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I'm Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast, and you can find my written work over on Gamecocks Digest on SI.com. Thank y'all so much for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch for your team every day. We are free and available both wherever you get your audio podcasts daily and also on YouTube. And we got a lot that we're going to dive into on this Tuesday edition of Locked On Gamecocks. We're going to talk about the subtle hype machine that keeps on swirling around North Carolina and how it's going to make Shane Beamer's job much easier as the Gamecocks get closer and closer to that week one matchup. Also, Antoine Juicewell spoke out about his injury and the rumblings surrounding it. What all did he have to say and who could benefit from Juicewell's absence in practice? And lastly, a Gamecock legend is set to have his jersey retired in the 2023 season. We'll touch on who that legend is and what his impact was on South Carolina's football program on today's show. But let's start with North Carolina because the Tar Heels continue to get the benefit of the doubt more so than South Carolina when it comes to the national media landscape in college football. And Shane Beamer is going to use this to his full advantage. On Monday afternoon, the Associated Press poll came out, the preseason poll, that is. And the North Carolina Tar Heels were slotted at number 21 in this poll, while the Gamecocks, much like in the USA Today coaches poll, received votes to where they were technically slotted at 27th, if you want to name a spot, but they did not make the preseason top 25 poll for the Associated Press. By the way, that coaches poll that I just referred to, North Carolina was ranked 20th in that poll. And also, the betting line is starting to move more in North Carolina's favor. As about a month or two ago, the betting line was around a point and a half in favor of the Tar Heels. Now the line is set at minus two and a half points in favor of UNC. By this point, you're probably upset, you might be flabbergasted, you might be appalled, frustrated, or maybe a combination of all of those different feelings. But there's one person that probably does not feel that way about all of this, and that is Shane Beamer. As a matter of fact, you could easily make the case that he probably loves this because This hype that North Carolina is getting relative to South Carolina as we get closer to this season is going to give Shane Beamer options as to how he wants to approach discussing this game with his team. Specifically, there are two options or two different routes that Shane Beamer could take. The first route could be the high road route. In essence, Shane Beamer could use this to drive home how this football team still has a ways to go in order to earn the respect that they may feel they deserve from all of these talking heads around the sport. Shane Beamer has no issue using the media to try and send that message to his team. He did it after the 2021 season when South Carolina ended the season on a high note, which included, ironically enough, a bowl win over North Carolina. And he did it once again after the 2022 season when the Gamecocks knocked off two top 10 teams and college football playoff contenders in Tennessee and Clemson and then just barely lost the Gator Bowl to a big-time national brand in the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. He can use this, in essence, to let his team know that, hey, what y'all did at the end of the last season was phenomenal. No other team, of course, accomplished that goal this past season outside of, well, more than likely the Georgia Bulldogs in lieu of winning a national championship in January. But... Nobody cares about what you did this past November anymore. It's a new season. It's a clean slate for everybody. Shane Beamer undoubtedly 
can use that narrative and have that permeate throughout his entire locker room. Send that message to his football team. But there is also another route that Shane Beamer could take here because of all of the subtle hype surrounding North Carolina. And that route is the exact opposite of the one that I just talked about. In essence, Shane Beamer could completely use the disrespect card for this game. Shane Beamer could use all of this talk around North Carolina being a slight favorite against South Carolina right now as motivation for his team, as fuel for their fire. Because Shane Beamer, while he likes to preach humility and grace and try to convey the need to avoid comfort through the media when he talks to them, Shane Beamer also has no issue keeping receipts and then referencing them at future dates. He has shown that on multiple different occasions. And when it comes to this approach, Shane Beamer can go about this from a team standpoint, a unit standpoint, and a player standpoint. When looking at the team standpoint, Shane Beamer can bring up to his team how they ended last season by defeating two top 10 teams and again, finished a year strong despite losing the Gator Bowl to Notre Dame. While North Carolina lost each of their last four games in the 2022 season, oh, and they didn't defeat a single top 25 opponent last year. South Carolina, for comparison, they defeated three top 15 teams, throwing in that Kentucky game that took place halfway through the season. From a unit standpoint, Shane Beamer could go to his defense and he could tell them how, hey, Drake May apparently is now the greatest thing since sliced bread. He's apparently a guaranteed top two pick for the NFL draft this next April. Everybody out there thinks that he is going to just slice and dice you all up and just carve you like a hot knife going through butter. And you're not going to be able to do anything to stop him. And Shane Beamer can also go to a special teams unit and say, hey, everybody's talking about the two lackluster defenses and the two star quarterbacks. Nobody's talking about how you all could be a differentiating factor in this football game. You were the number one special teams unit in the entire country this past season. But nobody thinks you can make a difference in this game, despite what all we have coming back. And then from a player standpoint, this one's pretty obvious. Shane Beamer can go to Spencer Rattler and he could tell him how, hey, everybody thinks that this game's going to come down to whether or not you play better than Drake May. And the majority of people out there outside of this building thinks that Drake May is going to play better than you. They think he is the better quarterback compared to you. And I know, and I know you all know, that with the competitive switch Spencer Rattler possesses, it wouldn't take very much before that switch would get flipped instantaneously. Shane Beamer, I will say, he will likely use a combination of both strategies with his team as South Carolina gets closer and closer to that week one matchup with the North Carolina Tar Heels. But the bottom line for this entire conversation is that the national media and all the talking heads and everybody that keeps on pointing to North Carolina, despite everything we just talked about, they are making Shane Beamer's job much easier because Shane Beamer now has a couple different routes that he can take when it comes to his messaging to his team about their first game. Will it be them taking the high road or will Shane Beamer play that disrespect card to the nth degree? He could do either or, or he could mix in both. But if you're Shane Beamer, there's no question you're loving all of this right now. And if you're a fan, that ought to make you feel pretty good because Shane Beamer knows how to motivate. And a motivated South Carolina team will be a dangerous South Carolina team as this game approaches on September the 2nd. Now, there have been some rumblings that have been trickling out there in the past couple of days regarding The health status of one of South Carolina's star players and Antoine Juice Wells. We talked about this on the Monday show about how Juice Wells, he's going to be out for this week when it comes to practice. And 
Shane Bieber's optimistic that he'll be back for Game 1. But Juice Wells hadn't had his say regarding his injury status until Monday afternoon. And we're going to dive into what exactly he said in just a couple moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by Nutrafil. Did you know that 80% of men will experience hair thinning at some point in their lifetime? It's pretty normal, but it doesn't mean that it has to be your fate. You can get ahead of hair thinning right now with Nutrafil. Nutrafil is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement out there because it's clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Take the first step to visibly thicker and healthier hair right now. For a limited time, Nutrafil is offering our listeners and viewers $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafil.com slash men and enter the promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafil for healthier hair. Nutrafil.com slash men, spelled N U T. R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men and enter promo code locked on college. That's neutrophil.com slash men promo code locked on college. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day in just 30 minutes. And as always, a big thank you to all of you everydayers for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your daily choice for South Carolina Gamecock sports coverage. Based on a tweet that he posted on Monday afternoon, there's no longer any need to be worried about the long-term health status of Antoine Juice Well, I'm going to pull up the tweet real quick for those of you watching today's show, and I'll read it out loud for those of you listening on an audio podcast app. But Antoine Juice Wells, a little bit after lunchtime on Monday afternoon, said, Stop asking me if I'm good. I'm great. So what this tweet seems to signal to me is that uh, the injury is not serious, and if you've been messaging him asking if he is good, he's great. So quit asking. And think about it in the way that Nick Saban responded to Maria Taylor when she asked him about Alabama's quarterback controversy between Tua Tagovailoa and Jalen Hurts all those years ago. So, that's obviously good news if you're a South Carolina football fan. It sounds like the Juice Wells, if he is going to be out, he's not going to be out for very long. But, while Juice Wells is absent from practice, who could maybe capitalize on this opportunity? And I hate to say it that way, but... There is a touch of a silver lining here with Antoine Juice Wells missing some practice time. And that's the fact that some of these backups are going to have a chance to maybe get some more snaps. Maybe some snaps with the first team or second team. So, who are a few players that could benefit from Juice Wells' absence? Well, the first one that comes to mind is Nicholas Harper. And while Harper is not in the too deep, at least as of right now... He is certainly going to get more reps being an outside wide receiver with Antoine Juice Wells being out of the lineup. This could allow him to get possibly more attention from wide receivers coach Justin Stepp. And this usually does happen with guys that are higher up on the depth chart in practice, whether these coaches like to admit it or not. You're going to pay more attention to the guys that are going to have the best chance to help your football team that upcoming season especially those that have the potential that Nicholas Harper possesses. And let's think about it this way. Let's say Nicholas Harper gets maybe some more second team reps. That would mean that he is getting more passes from Luke Doty, who obviously, no matter what you think about his long-term potential as maybe a starting quarterback here, Luke Doty is a veteran. He's had a ton of experiences here during his college career. And he could help Nicholas Harper potentially learn this offense at a much faster rate than he would otherwise if he was out there with Tanner Bailey or Lenore Sellers, two guys that are still relatively young when it comes to their college careers and are kind of battling it out for that third-string quarterback spot right now, it seems. Or at least it seems like Lenore Sellers has the edge, 
But that also means that Tanner Bailey is probably a lot more focused on what all he needs to do to get better. Same deal with the North Sellers, obviously. And that might inadvertently hold back Nicholas Harper a touch because he's not working with a guy that might be more willing to help him, maybe if, say, a play breaks down. Luke Doty could be that kind of guy for him if he gets those kind of reps with him during practice. So that would be really good for the young true freshman that, again, clearly is one of the best athletes on this team. But in terms of being a pure wide receiver, he's still got a good ways to go. Another receiver that could benefit from, from Juice Wells' absence is Omega Blake. Now, unlike Nicholas Harper, Omega Blake is a veteran on this roster. He's now had a few years that he has spent in Columbia as a college wideout, but he's never really broken out. He's never really become a mainstay in South Carolina's wide receiver rotation. With Juice Wells, however, being out of the lineup right now, Omega Blake is likely going to be running with the ones a lot more alongside Xavier Leggett and Amorian Brown. And that's going to put a much bigger spotlight on Omega Blake because that would give him an opportunity to show Coach Justin Stepp and Coach Dow Loggins, the offensive coordinator, why he deserves an opportunity to be in this wide receiver rotation of, say, six, seven receivers as the Gamecocks start the 2023 football season. If that does end up happening, that also means that, therefore, he's going to get more reps with Spencer Rattler, which would be of more benefit to him, especially if he does break into this rotation because Spencer Rattler, obviously, unlike these wide receivers, he's not being rotated in and out with Luke Doty. Spencer Rattler's the quarterback. He's going to be playing a lot of the snaps for South Carolina at that spot. And so if Omega Blake is going to be playing a lot this fall for one reason or another, then he needs to get reps out there with Spencer Rattler. And unfortunately, when it comes to practice, the coaches are not always afforded the opportunity to get those kind of guys the same kind of reps with the ones as, say, a Juice Wells or Xavier Leggett, who you know are going to be your starters, and they're going to obviously, therefore, be in that rotation. So that would be huge for Omega Blake in terms of his development and him getting possibly a chance to show the staff that he is ready to take the next step. One last guy that could benefit from Juice Wells' absence is Elijah Caldwell. Now, he's been getting his real first taste of college football during fall camp. He was not here with South Carolina's team during spring practice. He arrived during the summertime. So, right now, Elijah Caldwell's head is probably spinning a little bit. He probably feels like that he's honestly taking on water every day when it comes to how much he's getting thrown at him. But there's been a lot of good and positive talk surrounding Elijah Caldwell. He's been noted by Spencer Rattler as a guy that could help this team this season. So, having Juice Wells out of the lineup right now, and maybe, say, some of these other guys getting bumped up there for one spot, it could allow Elijah Caldwell, therefore, to get more reps. And right now, at the stage of his career, Elijah Caldwell, the most important thing is getting reps, getting volume in practice, and therefore having a chance to work on his craft. So... Does that mean that he's going to break into the second string? Probably not, at least based on what I've seen so far in some of these practices I've been able to go and watch. But that does not mean that this wouldn't be of benefit to Elijah Caldwell. I think that Elijah Caldwell, he's going to have a good chance to at least try to progress a little bit more in terms of his own individual game while Juice Wells is out dealing with this lower body injury. One of the coolest parts about following some of these teams is how much they like to honor some of the former players and coaches that have come through the building, that have played or coached in their respective stadium. Guys that really helped their team take that next step, elevate their perception in their respective sport. And that is what Alshon Jeffrey did for the South Carolina Gamecocks when he played here from 2009 to 2011. And for everything he accomplished during his college career, the school has announced that they are officially going to retire his jersey during the halftime proceedings of the Mississippi State game this upcoming season. This was announced by the school's athletic department on Monday afternoon. Alshon Jeffrey is going to become the sixth player in school history to have either his jersey number or his jersey retired by the football program. 
he becomes just the second wide receiver in program history to have this honor bestowed upon him, joining Sterling Sharp. Now, his jersey being retired means that the number can still be worn. So that does not mean that after week four, the number one is going to be out of circulation for South Carolina. That Alshon Jeffrey is still going to receive the same kind of ceremony and love that some of these other guys received whenever their number or jersey was retired. Now, when looking at Alshon Jeffrey's career accomplishments here at South Carolina, um, this decision was a pretty easy one for the athletic department. Alshon Jeffrey, when it comes to the football program, he ranks third all-time in career receptions with 183. He ranks second all-time in career receiving yards with 3,042 yards attached to his name. He is tied for first all-time in career receiving touchdowns with 23. He was a first-team freshman All-American and freshman All-SEC selection in 2009. In 2010, he was a consensus All-SEC and All-American selection and a Belindikoff Award finalist, which is given to the best wide receiver in college football every year. And he played a vital role in the Gamecocks' rise under then-head coach Steve Spurrier, helping South Carolina appear in their first-ever SEC title game in 2010. So what kind of impact did Alshon Jeffrey have on this football program? He had a multifaceted one. Firstly, and I did kind of just allude to this, but he was a part of a special group of South Carolina natives that stayed home to help the Gamecocks elevate their status. He was a part of a very special 2009 class when it comes to this particular aspect because he joined fellow commits Justice Cunningham, DJ Swearinger, Jimmy Legree, Devontae Holloman, and Stephon Gilmore in a 2009 class that had a bevy of South Carolina natives that eventually became starters and productive contributors for this team. That was, of course, followed up by guys like Marcus Lattimore, A.J. Can, Victor Hampton, Jadavion Clowney, Kelsey Corals, Brandon Shell, guys that had a really big impact on this team from an individual standpoint when they came to Columbia. Another reason why Alshon Jeffrey had a big impact on this program is he showed up in big games that helped to change the program's perception. And the two games that really come to mind when discussing this is the 2010 game against Alabama and the 2011 game against Nebraska in the Capital One Bowl. That 2010 game was memorable for a lot of different reasons, and most people recall that game as the best game of Steven Garcia's career because I believe he only had one incompletion on the entire afternoon. He out-dueled Greg McElroy, a guy that had just won a national championship with the Crimson Tide. Alabama still had guys like Mark Ingram and Julio Jones on their team. They were the number one team in the country. I believe they had won, at that point, around 19, 20 straight games. This Alabama team was a really good team. And South Carolina knocked them off. And a big reason why was because of Alshon Jeffrey. He had seven catches for 127 yards and two touchdowns. And one of those catches was his memorable one-handed catch against future NFL cornerback Dre Kirkpatrick, who quite literally was draping Alshon Jeffrey. And as Gary Danielson put it so well, he did everything he could. He held him, he grabbed him, but Alshon Jeffrey still caught it with his other hand. It's one of the biggest plays in this football program's history to this day. And in my opinion, it might be the biggest play of the entire Steve Spurrier era, if you ask me. The 2011 game against Nebraska capped off a great career for Alshon Jeffrey. The 2011 season did not go as Gamecock fans had hoped when it came to Jeffrey's numbers. I believe that he was dealing with a broken foot, as we have learned since then, which explains a lot when it comes to why he had a massive dip in production. But still, this 2011 game against Nebraska, Jeffrey had a fantastic game. Four catches, 148 receiving yards, and one touchdown. And that one touchdown was the Hail Mary catch that he had at the end of the first half against the Cornhuskers, where he quite literally jumped over everybody that was back there. It seemed like six, seven guys when watching the play back and then dove into the end zone. It was a touchdown that gave South Carolina the lead. It gave them all the momentum. And I don't believe that Nebraska led at all for the entire rest of the football game after that play took place. So it was a big moment in that game. And it came against, at the time, still, 
a nationally recognizable brand in the Nebraska Cornhuskers and a team that was still consistently a top 25 program at that point. So that was a huge game for South Carolina's football program. And Jeffrey, once again, he played a big role in the Gamecocks getting the victory. And the last thing that I want to talk about real quick that really makes Alson Jeffrey's career so memorable and so good in hindsight he did everything he did with very little help around him pertaining to the wide receiver position. That's not to say that South Carolina did not have talented guys out there. But looking back at the stats, from 2009 to 2011, the three years that Alshon Jeffrey was here, he never had a receiver behind him break 465 receiving yards in one season. Not a one. And that's no offense to Tory Gurley. Mo Brown or A. Sanders, the three guys that were kind of maybe the second best receiver at some point during that three-year stretch behind Alshon Jeffrey. But the point is, Jeffrey went out there and he dominated. Secondaries every week knew that guy's going to get the ball. We got to watch out for number one. We got to cover him. We got to put a safety over there. It did not matter what defenses did. Alshon Jeffrey went out there and he made plays happen. And especially that 2010 season, nobody could stop him. So, needless to say, this is a well-deserved honor for the St. Matthews product. Alshon Jeffrey absolutely deserves to have his jersey retired. Big congratulations to him. Um, Something that definitely a lot of Gamecock fans could have seen coming in hindsight. Again, considering everything that he accomplished here. And I know that we're all still awaiting for number 14 to be up there at some point that can be attributed to Connor Shaw and hopefully Phil Petty in honor of what all he did to help this program rise from the ashes when he played here. But nonetheless, pretty big deal and really cool to see that another South Carolina native is receiving this prestigious honor. So with that being said, that does it for today's edition of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast. I hope y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show as always. What are your thoughts on how the North Carolina hype could help Shane Beamer craft his message for his team leading into that game? What are your thoughts on what Juice Wells had to say regarding his current injury status? And what do you think about the fact that Alshon Jeffrey is going to get his jersey retired in week four when the Gamecocks take on Mississippi State? Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments section. If you watch today's show on YouTube or shoot me a direct message on Twitter at a line underscore SC. If you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Tuesday and I'll be sure to catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.